Electra Voice is founded in 1927. Uh, that is, that's uh, correct. That's the first, that's the year we built our first PA system. Oh, okay. Yeah, right. Um, uh, but we, we founded Electra Voice uh, by being microphone engineers. They started repairing uh, microphones back in 1927, and it all spun out of control from there. So EV starts as a microphone company at, at its core. That is correct. That's what we do, man. That is correct. We do mics. And, you know, throughout the years, you look at uh, the incredible achievements that this brand has had and the, the microphones that have been used for world events. John Glenn's Orbit of the Moon, right? Martin Luther King's I Have a Dream speech. You bet. Right? I mean, these are, you know, one small step for man, one giant leap for mankind. These are iconic phrases that are captured, you know, at global events you that bet. that really are at the core of who we are. Um, and you look at the evolution of our company and all the stuff that we do right now, you know, it all still comes back to microphones. So, I wanted to spend some time with you today talking a little bit about, you know, my favorite mics that we make, and, and that's our broadcast mics. I mean, um, again, with how iconic they are, I mean, there's almost not a radio studio in the planet that you don't see these things, right? right? I mean, they're everywhere. Absolutely correct. Or recording studios, um, because as they were developed as uh, voice microphones for broadcast. They've been adopted because they're so good at what they do. Uh, noise isolation, uh, variable D, so no change in tone with distance, all these things. Uh, you know, uh, 1927, we were repairing mics and, and building mics. In 30, 1932, we invented the humbucking coil, and we were the first to use that in a microphone. Yeah, what, before they even put it in a guitar pickup. 25 right? years in, before they put it in mics, a guitar. Right? <laughs> exactly, you know, and you think of what that did for guitars. Uh, 25 years later, it was the same scenario with the microphone in 1932, right? Yeah. They were single coil, low output, noisy. You put a humbucking coil in a microphone, now you have high output, no noise, just, uh, again, revolutionizing microphones. Yeah, so, well, with these mics in particular, you know, um, we've got some here that are um, older than 50 years, the yep. RE20, yep. um, and we've got some that's uh, actually just a couple of months old, <laughs> that's right. uh, which is really cool. It's kind of uh, a, an iteration of the same mic, but um, you know, the point uh, for me is that it, even after all this time, these mics are still incredibly relevant, um, even in some ways more so now with podcasting, content creation at home. Exactly. I mean, far more people are in the market for a microphone now than ever before, Correct. right? It used to be just kind of pros or musicians and exactly. things like that. But now it's, hey, I want to talk about gardening. I need a microphone. Absolutely. Uh, the content creation in and of itself is, is that next thing. And while at the highest levels in broadcast, our mics have always been there. So the best voices you've ever heard are, are, have been captured on an RE20. Everyone getting into content creation today you know, we want to bring their level of performance and how they sound and how professional they come across by getting them into the best mics that the world-class guys use every day. And yeah. they're affordable, mate. Absolutely. I mean, you know, there's no doubt they're more expensive than just your crappy USB mic that you might buy off, you know, some random website and plug it in and hope you get good results. But you know, at the end of the day, you spend a little bit more, you get a professional quality microphone, it's going to encourage you to keep doing what you're doing, you know, instead of just fighting the, the technology and it sounds terrible, you know, you want to sound like you, you want to have some warmth to it and get your message out without any worries of, 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 of a bunch of junk. So that's really what these mics are all about. So I want to do a couple of things. I, I, I'm, I'd like to talk about each each of these mics, their unique characteristics, and then I'm hoping that that you can actually uh, help me test them out. And and you know, we're right now we're not using these mics, but um, you know, if we capture the audio from each, I'd love to give uh, you know people a chance to to hear you know what the, the unique sonic characteristics of each of these. So, um, but starting down on your end, um, what's what's kind of that first one there? What are we what are we looking at there? All right, so on the end here, Mike, we have the RE320, okay? A large diaphragm dynamic. And when we talk about large diaphragm dynamic, the larger the diaphragm, the more frequency response it has, uh, the quicker the transients, that kind of thing. So it's capturing 
uh, a lot. It has variable D technology in it, which was pioneered by the original RE20. Um, variable D, now, what is that exactly? I've, I've heard it, but how does it work? Okay. Um, well, the whole reason these, all of these microphones are iconic in the broadcast world uh, was based around our technology of variable D. Uh, variable D means it does not matter how close you get onto this microphone or how far you back up, your tone doesn't change which in normal microphones is pretty inherent with any microphone. Um, the, the closer you get to the mic, the more low-end yeah, buildup happens. Yeah, gets boomy. Boomy and, and yeah. all that stuff. So in broadcast, it's really important in, in a studio when you're broadcasting, your moving head's around. moving around, right? And you might be a little closer, a little further away. You don't want the tone to change. You just want the volume to change with right. distance. The further away you go, the less volume. Uh, but it doesn't change that beautiful voice uh, a broadcaster, you know, uh, is after. So right, that's yeah, really and that, that's, a, that's a really cool feature, and that's actually done by the venting on the sides, right? The, it looks cool, but that's actually the function of variable D that's patented, right, as you, uh, because it's capturing air as you get up closer, instead of building up, it's allowing that air to pass through the body of the mic, and it's not not building up yep. and getting getting yep. that boomy sound. So I want to definitely listen to that later when when we're when we're going through these microphones. So Perfect. Yeah. Um, I, I I I really want to hear that. But you also mentioned that the RE three twenty is a dynamic, but all of these are dynamics, right? That is correct. The interesting thing about that is I think there's this misnomer out there that condenser mics are better, and that's not the case whatsoever. I mean, dynamics are are generally more durable, number one, but also when you think about, um, you know, how people, especially people at home, using these in less than professional studios, right? Exactly. Um, dynamics are far less susceptible to external noises and, and, and hearing all the junk around you. It's really uh, much better at, at much getting focused. what it's supposed to get and, exactly. and not hearing Rejecting. everything around you. Yep. Yeah. So I think that's important as we talk about all these to, to recognize that they are all dynamics. Um, you know, no phantom power is required. You know, um, you can, you can kind of plug them into any decent preamp and away you go. Exactly. Um, so tell me more about the RE320 as far as, you know, the general characteristics uh, of its sound and, and output. You bet. Um, so Mike, the RE320 has a neodymium magnet structure on it, okay. okay? And what you get out of that is more high-end sizzle and a little brighter tone out of the gate okay. um, uh, as compared to the RE20 that has an iron magnet, okay? Um, what you're gonna get with the RE20 um, is a little, a little smoother. The RE320 has a little more sizzle on top. Uh, to bring out the crispness and intelligibility of, of speaking. Um, so they're two different flavors, okay. right? Uh, not any one is, is the live all end all for everyone. Right. Um, it's always up to the human voice and yeah. which one makes it easier to do what you need to do. The 320 is pretty balanced when I've listened to it. You know, you've got that warmth, and, but you also have that high end crispness. Exactly. Um, crispness, yep. <laughs> I should say. You bet. If, if you can say it right, it sounds great. There um, you go. There um, you go. Um, so that's the RE320, but then moving up from that uh, is really uh, the most iconic product, Electrovoice has ever made. For sure. No doubt. I mean, we released that mic in 1969, I believe, yeah. and it has been absolutely a juggernaut. I mean, Stevie Wonder recorded Songs in the Key of Life with you an bet. RE20, man. I mean, come the, on. The list is the <laughs> list is so long. If it's good enough for Stevie, it's good enough for me, man. So, <laughs> right. um, you know, that microphone it has its its own legend, but um, you know, I, I come from a radio background. I always used RE20s long before I worked for EV. And man, it's just this warm, punchy sound that I've never heard on anything else. It's almost, I mean, it's indescribable how, how great that mic sounds. Um, what are your experiences with it? And do you use it just on voice? I mean, are there other things you can do with it? I've used it on everything, Mike. Uh, seriously, every instrument <laughs> in a modern recording studio, yeah. I've tried this mic on and, and used at one point or another. Incredible on uh, um, wind instruments, brass instruments, saxophones, trombones, uh, uh, berry sax. Um, I've used it everywhere. 
and and it's always a beautiful outcome. Always. Yeah. Um, yeah. I've never been disappointed. Yeah. Um, uh, it's it's an iconic kick drum mic. It's been used as a kick, sure. one of the best kick drum mics in major studios for 40, 35, 40 years, yeah. right? Uh, again, we didn't build it for that, but studio guys will try every mic to get the optimum sound, and they gravitate towards this for that same reason. It, it, it can handle, because as you mentioned earlier, it's a dynamic. It can handle SPL levels that a lot of condensers wouldn't be able to, to process uh, mm -hmm. properly. Uh, so dynamic has a higher SPL threshold uh, before distortion. And so you can put this in front of a really loud uh, right. saxophone blaring or trumpet blaring or kick drum right. that's super loud and it, and it doesn't hurt it and it doesn't distort the signal. And that's another big feature for the dynamic uh, microphone. I see a lot of people putting windscreens and pop filters on them. I hear them say they need, uh, you know, maybe like an, an, another preamp before their preamp because they're not getting enough gain out of it. Yep. Um, help me dispel some of those those myths there about, uh, about that mic. My, my feeling is always less is more, right? right. Um, uh, the RE20 uh, going into a console, whatever you're using, uh, in comparison to a lot of other mics, even our RE320 or the 27, has lower gain, right. okay? So you do have, you turn up the gain a little bit more. Sure. Um, but you don't necessarily need an external preamp added to that. Right. Um, when you introduce more gear, other preamps, you're introducing no inherent noise. Yeah, all and sorts of course of you things. don't want to buy a crappy preamp that has a lot of noise. I that mean, is correct. That's going to make a lot of noise in whatever mic you plug it into, right? Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, from my experience, I've always been in incredibly uh, happy with the result of going directly into a decent preamp and as little EQ as, as needed. Um, yeah. It just sounds great. Um, you know, seasoned to taste, but yeah. light seasoning is better than dumping a whole canister of salt on something. Sure. Okay, but with the pop filters and windscreens, we don't, we don't really need that either, right? Adding things, right? It's, you're adding more things. And, and the wonderful thing about all these microphones is that they have multiple layers of plosive filters already built into it, right? right? Yep. Um, so putting something over the top of this, again, is, can change the dynamic quality of what it's picking up and what it sounds like. Um, for the most part, you should not need anything yeah. like that. I mean, like I said, I mean, when I used one in my radio career, uh, you know, there was never a, a windscreen on those mics. Right. I mean, what you learned was proper microphone technique. Exactly. And, you know, number one, you don't want the microphone right in your field of vision. I mean, who wants to look at this thing in my face all day? Right, so you just put it off to the side like this, like a forty-five degree angle, yep. and all of those Most plosives, of those plosives are, are, are shooting going right past you. That's it, correct. It's totally unnecessary. So yep. you know, if, if if you're starting out and you you know just because you see it, don't feel like you need it. I mean that that's silly. So if that RE twenty now has been around for over fifty years, you can see it's got that classic gray finish that was you know just that that uh, iconic look. Um, but, you know, with these microphones showing up more and more on camera these days, um, you know, we were getting feedback that they wanted something that would, that would also look really good on camera. Exactly. And, and that's where this one kind of came in, right? Absolutely. You know, and the matte black finish on that looks great on camera. And uh, you're, you're exactly right. Um, this wasn't necessarily built for being on camera when we originally built it. It was for recording it in a, in a radio station. Now you have something... You know, brand you new look color. At yeah, now you got to look at it. You should look at it. We want everyone to look at it. So Hell yeah, and so the the RE20 and the RE20 Black are exactly the same. Absolutely, right? No difference whatsoever, other than the finish. That is correct. Right? That is so, correct. We and do. I'm looking at it, and it's not only black, which is cool, but it's also a very matte. Uh, matte finish, so it's not reflective uh, exactly. of the lights. We've got some good lights in here, and it's it's uh, just nice, uh, you know, not shining at me too much. It it looks so cool. Yeah. I, I love this mic. So yeah. yeah, the RE20 and the RE20 Black otherwise are identical. Um, and then I guess you know what I also want to talk about last but not least in this family is the RE27 ND, and and if that one's not reflective, this one is sparkling <laughs> i love this microphone it's a it's a it's at the other opposite end of the spectrum as far as 
looks are concerned, but but man, this thing looks cool too. Tell me, Absolutely. tell me about this one. Well, the RE27ND, as you mentioned, that ND stands for neodymium magnet structure. Okay, and as we, we spoke about, the RE320 also has a neodymium magnet structure. Um, what is that going to get you? It's a little hotter output. Um, a little more detail in the high end and, and mid-range where the vocal lives. Mm -hmm. um, so it just gives you another flavor of the iconic sound of the RE20. And this actually has a few switches on it, actually three different switches. Yep. Um, those are just boost and cut switches or cut switches? They're, yeah, and they're, they're EQ switches. Basically okay. what you're doing is changing the EQ, right? So you, so you have a high pass where you're cutting out all the lows, so you're not... Um, muddying up if you have an inherently low uh, frequency source, either yep. voice or instrument, um, and you, you don't want that, you can cut it, right? Uh, then there's kind of a mid-scoop, right? So you get this stronger low end, nice sizzle on top, and smooth out the mid-range a little bit. And then there's also a, a low pass, if I'm not mistaken, on, on the top switch of that. And so the RE27ND then is actually, you know, has a few more options. I would describe it as edgy and kind of forward. It's it's aggressive. Yep. Forward right. Mix, so you're bet. getting that 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 balance of tone, but it's it's kind of in your face. It's yep. it's. Uh, I, I know actually Ryan Seacrest uses this mic. Yep. Um. And and you know it's kind of that uh, that edgier sound, right? It's not that classic FM. You know, warm, warm. tones. Yeah. Yep. This has has an edgier sound. So really, I mean, at the end of the day, all of these mics, you know, um, they look similar. The behavior characteristics are, are, are uh, pretty much the same, but the tone is really what changes the tone and the output. So, you know, I, I like to look at it and, you know, people ask, well, what's the right one for me? You know, there's no right answer. I would say right. try to listen to it, if you at bet. all possible. Uh, try to think about what your voice is like now, if you can't listen to it. And, and what it is about your voice that you would like to either accentuate or, or change. Maybe if you've got a really edgy voice already, maybe you want to tone that down Smooth with a 20. Maybe you want to accentuate that and make it really edgy with something like the 27. You maybe bet. you want it really neutral. Um, you've, you've got options. So think about what you want to sound like. Um, and then, you know, there's no wrong answer. It's, right. you know, what flavor ice cream do you like? I mean, you know, it, it, that's what it's all about. You exactly. pick, pick the one that you like and then that becomes your sound. So, exactly. So speaking of sound then, let's, let's spend some time listening to each one of these. I want to give people a chance to hear the individual characteristics and, and the tone. Um, so let's, uh, me and you, we'll, we'll go through each of these mics, say a little phrase, um, and so they can hear a couple of different voices on them and, and really get a flavor for, for what each mic is capable of. Sounds great. Let's do it. This is the sound of the Electrovoice RE320. This is the sound of the Electrovoice RE20. This is the sound of the Electrovoice RE20 Black. This is the sound of the Electrovoice RE27 ND. This is the sound of the Electrovoice RE320. This is the sound of the Electrovoice RE20. This is the sound of the Electrovoice RE20 Black. This is the sound of Electrovoice RE27. Well, like I said, I mean, RE20 is my personal favorite, but, you know, they all sound so good. I mean, I can see myself using any one of these, you know, I, and I'd be happy. To 